With all the indie games I play on this channel, I can't review each one in their own video. So let's rank and review the 10 best indie games I've played over this past month. Stick around for a giveaway you don't want to miss and let's get to those sweet, sweet indie games. Starting off the list strong is one for all my fellow vampire survivors and Brotato fans with Gunsuit Guardians. Gunsuit Guardians is a space themed twin stick horde survival game with some of my favorite pixel art in the genre featuring thick borders and great attention to visibility. What separates this game from its influences is the fact that you can change from auto-aim to manual on the fly. This allows for some nice strategy when swarms of enemies aim to take you down and boss encounters take up most of the screen. Gunsuit Guardians has multiple characters to choose from, a whole slew of weapons, and even special abilities that can help you stick around and rise on the leaderboards. The game is developed by Matt Glanville who made Switch and Shoot, which was in the first video ever on this channel, and I can safely recommend all of his games to indie and budget gaming fans alike. The next game on this list was one of my most anticipated roguelites of 2023 and beyond the long night, and there's a lot to like about this game. For starters, the atmosphere and music pair so well with the lighting that it strikes a cool balance of warm and lighthearted at times and intense and chaotic at others. This is helped in part by the NPCs you'll meet along the way that develop over time and make this world feel less lonely overall. I also really love the visual representation of health in the form of balloons Mario Kart battle style, which is actually really helpful in not constantly peeping the UI during combat. Unfortunately, the game is held back by one issue that might be a deal breaker for some of you. The pixel art is beautiful, but unfortunately everything is just a bit too small for me, though the ability to have enemies highlighted does help a bit. In spite of its issues, I still enjoyed my time with it for the most part, and if you're less sensitive to the small sprites, give this roguelite a shot. Now if you're into relaxing and chill city builders like Dorf Romantic, then this next game should definitely be on your radar. Terrascape blends casual city building with an older settlement presentation that fits nicely with its landscape. The aim of the game at its core is simple, build up your settlement which builds up points and after a certain number of structures and elements are placed, you're presented with decks of cards that contain more elements to add on. You can build to your heart's content in the free build mode and there's also a story mode that gives you medals for building strategically. If you want to face your friends in multiplayer, you can do that and even more modes are on the way. I really like how calming the free build mode is in particular and this is a great game to play before bed or alongside your favorite podcast. It occupies a cool space between games like Dorf Romantic and Islanders, and if that sounds up your alley, then this one's a solid pickup even in early access. Next up is one for all my fellow cozy game fans in Mail Time. Mail Time is a wonderful 3D adventure game all about becoming a full-fledged mail scout. In order to achieve this high honor, you'll need to deliver letters all throughout the Grumblewood Grove, which is larger and more detailed than I expected. The art style's superb with a cottage core aesthetic that pops right off the screen. Throughout your adventure, you'll meet so many NPCs that all have unique personalities and interact with other NPCs through the messages you're delivering. There's a lot of dialogue here, and while that might put some people off, I personally thought it was all really well written with a touch of charm and humor that I appreciated. This game looks great, but it's also really well optimized, and playing this one on a 4K TV was an absolute treat. Now you can roll credits very quickly, but Mail Time is one of those games that you really want to take your time with. The light platforming, collecting, and dialogue are just some of the reasons that make this journey all worth it. Now calling this next game a vampire survivors like is really not the full story and in some ways it's even better. Crafty Survivors is inspired by the titan of the genre but when you really dive in it's less of a reverse bullet hell and more of an action RPG with some elements of reverse bullet hell games baked in. I say this because unlike most games like Vampire Survivors you control the deployment and aiming of your abilities at all times. This creates for a more active experience and one that I prefer in many ways. I have more control and strategy which helps you complete a series of levels and multiple areas that culminate in a boss battle. The game contains very unique characters that all have their own theme and abilities that are only for that character. This is a major win for replayability. Meta progression is done through your home village that grows with different buildings representing different stat boosts which has more of an RPG feel to it. While the game is still in early access and more is on the way, I think this one's being slept on and more people who are and are not fans of Vampire Survivors should definitely check it out. This next game took me completely by surprise. Mr. Sun Hatbox is a humorous roguelite action platformer with stealth elements and plenty of hats. You play as a delivery service agent who is determined to find and return Mr. Sun's package to him, a level of determination never seen before by any delivery service that I've ever used. As you convert Mr. Sun's basement into your covert operations HQ, you'll embark on missions which may require kidnapping suspects and recruiting them into your staff of hat finders, eliminating targets, or stealing hats that may or may not belong to Mr. Sun. These missions vary based on what character you 
embark on who all have unique traits both good and bad which leads to some hilarious situations. It almost feels like a reverse Spelunky with elements of Rogue Legacy but this has an identity all to its own thanks to its systems and presentation. It's a refreshing take on the genre with the exact amount of chaos that I'm looking for. Lone Fungus is my current Metroidvania of the year, no question. This is a sprawling Metroidvania adventure starring a lovable fungi on a mission to reach the surface as the last of their kind. Along your journey, you'll meet a number of helpful statues, encounter a nice number of secrets, and a seriously impressive number of bosses. Combat is basic but well done with the ability to add relics and abilities that can prove to be the difference maker in a boss encounter. What really stands out though is the platforming. Along the way, you'll encounter these side rooms and special challenges that test your mastery of the entirety of your moveset. These feel like Celeste-like precision platforming rooms and completing some of the more difficult ones were the biggest highs I experienced during my playthrough. While the map can be a bit overwhelming and prepare to get lost here and there, it's an awesome metroidvania and proof that early access isn't just beneficial to roguelites and survival games. When I previewed Chia back in January, I was blown away and left with high hopes for the full game. Well, thankfully I'm here to say that my hype was fully justified. This cozy open world adventure game has some fairly obvious Zelda influences, but this is not some sort of facsimile, it has an identity and feel all to its own. As I explored everything there was to offer in this island world based off of New Caledonia, I just had a smile on my face the entire time. The game's feature mechanics, soul jumping, never got old and transforming into a bird to soar to a new area, a dolphin to race underwater, a crab to solve a puzzle, and more made exploration so much fun. But it goes beyond just animals. I spent a ton of time as a rock for no reason and using soul jumping strategically in the occasional light combat portion was satisfying as well. While it does have some trappings of pretty much every open world game, I can safely say that if you're on PC or PlayStation, Chia is a game to check out for that open world fix. Of all the Pokemon inspired RPGs I've played over the years, I think this might be the best one. Cassette Beast is the new monster taming RPG on the block with an incredible 2.5D presentation, top tier soundtrack, and systems that build upon and in some ways innovate within the genre. In lieu of Pokeballs, you have cassettes, and with these cassettes, you actually copy a monster's data to transform into it in battle rather than collecting it outright. You also have a partner in battle, which you can use to your advantage with the fusion system. The fusion system really sets it apart from others in the monster taming genre, and evolutions feel more impactful for me, with some evolutions allowing you to choose based on the direction or style you'd like to take. The story is robust and has a level of mystique and creepiness that has had me more engaged than the genre has been able to in several years. This is not only a more mature and evolved Pokemon inspired game, in many ways it ascends to higher highs than the very titan that inspired its creation. Roguelike Hotline Miami. Do I even need to say anything more at this point? At number one, we have Ocho, a must-play fast-paced roguelike with a clear inspiration but some notable tricks up its sleeve. I love the black and white pixel art presentation with a hint of noir and a smattering of red blood to add pop to the absolute carnage being levied. How Ocho separates itself from its inspirations lies within its storytelling and gameplay elements. Each run you'll be presented with a series of run augmenting drinks from a bartender that adds to replayability nicely and there are bosses that feel equally exhilarating and impactful. But my favorite aspect of Ocho is that there's bullet time. During the frenetic fights, you'll have the ability to slow down the game to dodge through a sea of bullets or get a crucial weapon switch before you're eliminated. When taking inspiration from such a desired classic, it can be tough to live up to expectations, but I think Ocho has risen to the challenge. It's easily one of the most exciting games that I've played all year. Wanna win a copy of Ocho for free? Head on over to my Discord server to enter the giveaway and if you want a bonus entry, leave a comment below telling me what indie games you've been playing lately. If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe to discover more incredible indie games, and I'll see you in the next one.